Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the third part of Angular Team live stream. Um, today we will be continuing continue to build the leaderboard of nonsense. It's an application for our team at PTLV to see the leaderboard of everyone. Um, I have here with me Noani and Fabio. Hello. Uh, last uh, last stream we talked that we integrated uh, Angular Firebase and we we uh, created an account on, on Firebase and set up and proved how Angular Firebase works. Um, today we have two goals. We need to set up the Google authentication and then uh, log in users and see if we can add uh, the functionality of updating the description and uh, the name of each user. Uh, do you guys have something to add? That sounds great. Uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, cool. Um, give me one second. Do you guys see? Yeah, I think now it's good. I can see your BS. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry for that. Okay, cool. So, what's the first thing? What do we need to do? Uh, so I think we need to set up a component that will um, the user will be able to log in, and mm -hmm. then once we have that, we can uh, connect to Firebase to do to perform the actual login action. Um, I'm pulling now the the mocks that we have to see or visual visualize how things are going to be. Uh, Is it going to be a separate page? Yeah, that's the question. Should we make it a separate page or just put the menu here with the button of uh, login? What do you guys suggest? Um, I think that um, it could be something like that, something like a navigation menu where you have a login button and that will... Uh, I don't know how the uh, login will work, but that probably is going to redirect you to a um, mm -hmm. Google authentication and then re redirect you back to our page. So we're probably going to use uh, some package to perform the all the connection with Firebase and Google and, and manage the token and and such things. Yeah, so I this think, app uh, is exclusive for people with Google accounts. Yes, only Google accounts, and oh. we have another requirement that only Etovians will be able to log in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's keep it simple and just put a button here on the page of leaderboard and that button will have all the logic of login or let's make it a component to encapsulate the logic in a separate component. Okay? Yeah, uh, we can always separate later too. Um, so we could just implement a button that will run a function and that's the login. Mm -hmm. Sh should I increase the font size? Uh, it looks good. I think we should uh, share the our production link um, and also deploy our latest our latest version to Firebase. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's deployed, it has the last version. 
I don't I don't remember if we deployed last time at the end. So the just an A and G deploy would surface. Yeah. Okay, let's open the Oh the we lost uh we lost Windows ninety five styles. Why it's not working? I think you didn't deploy it. But why on my local is not working? I don't know, are you in a different branch? Um that's weird. Last time it was it, we had Windows ninety five with the hacky solution. Why it's not working now? It's on my local, not on the deployed version. I don't know. You did push that commit to remote, so it should be should be working. Yeah. Uh, do you want to try and, and, and run deploy so we can see those, if this happens? Okay. In production as well? Do we have... Okay, deploy. Start in. Okay. Yeah, same goes here. Let's just put this beast here. This is the deployed version. Yeah, does not have Windows 95. Um, did you maybe undo some changes? Mm, no, I'm not I seeing think any. I, I I'm not seeing any styles be applied to the H1 tab, for example. Yeah. Um. Oops. Let's go to leaderboard component and see if we still have, yeah, we have some styles for the button. Those should work out of the box. Okay, so we have this here. Should, do we need to link it in the assets folder? I believe we didn't last time. They it does uh, I think we need our styles file should have should import the no uh, everything in assets is going to be included I think uh, so our styles file should import the styles that are in inside the assets folder no oh, it's not here Um, do you remember the syntax? Uh, import, and then a space, and then uh, dot slash assets, I guess. Um, slash Windows 95. Uh, is it in like this? Uh, single quotes, I think. Uh, I don't think there are parentheses, just single quotes. There is some add if I do remember something, no? 
Yeah, I, th I think you need that. Yeah. Uh, so the styles are not being imported. That's why. Uh, oh, you're correct. Maybe it's at import. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and then we need to uh, reference the actual uh, CSS file uh, and not the folder. Slash CSS. Um, slash... I should refresh here. Okay. Uh, does asset works, or do we need to do a dot slash assets? Yeah, it's the same problem. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so what we could do is instead is just add to the styles, the file to the styles, uh, the styles array, instead of importing. What's the difference? Uh, in angular.json file, you're going to just reference that, um, yeah, that same path. Should be dot in there, uh, in the styles array. Yeah. I think it's not the correct path. I'm here. Uh, yeah, you need to it's uh, source slash assets. Yeah. Is it? I wonder why it worked the last time. Of the it's process. inside source. Assets is inside source. Assets is inside source, yeah. Yeah. It should be better now. Hope so. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. mm. That's weird. No. Didn't work. Um, I should give you the link first. I forgot. Um, share. Yeah. That's a weird error. Yeah, I don't remember uh, what you did that worked at that time. Uh, but again, that was not um, committed, so we won't be able to get I that think, information. I think it's committed, no? No. I don't think so. That's weird. Yeah, there's just some spaces in the style CSS file. Yeah, we didn't update. Okay, uh, how about we debug that later and just uh, try to do the um, logging stuff without okay. the Windows 95 style. Okay. So let's create a new component, or uh, that will be our user navigation or something. And and once we have that component working, we can connect it to Firebase to start authenticating. Um, user navigation, you mean something, for example, here on the navbar 
or yeah on a nav bar at the top just like um the the ui file you had you showed us yeah something at the top right um but it will only have the login should we just add a button here and Encapsulate yep. the logic there. Yeah, if we don't have a token, that um, login button should appear. And if we do have mm -hmm. a token, uh, then uh, we will show the user uh, a way to update his information and uh, his name and description. Okay, so let's create a login component yeah um, login component uh, again this problem <laughs> okay uh, the module the should be a separated module Let's make it. I'm fine with it being on app module because that will need to be available right away. Otherwise, we would be using a lazy loaded module. Okay. And display export. The what does this ever mean? What's Sorry? what? What does this ever mean? The... The what? This error we have on the terminal. Oh, on the terminal. This... Um, normally I should use the, the terminal to generate a component to use the CLI. But I do prefer using this uh, extension with NX. For some reasons when I use live share and this extension it does not work it cannot find in PX I don't know why um, so I'm just gonna uh, the CLI has this feature of dry run when you if you want to execute a, com uh, a command line you can dry run the command and you can see the affected files by your command nx uses the same thing so here he tries to 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 create the 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 command in in our case create the component but he does not find npx that's why he does give this error i'm just gonna copy the command from here and then use it with the cli directly in the terminal that's why i'm using this so i will not make a mistake on the on some parameter or something and i, I do like the interface that it gives you can skip test you can make the component uh, uh, you can for example have change detection or push on a component you could configure a lot of stuff okay and that's happening because probably the live share when once it shares the terminal it loses reference to uh, NPX doesn't know what NPX is so mm, probably. the command doesn't work yeah okay um, here is the command Um, 
I think I should uh, specify the import uh, the module let's put it on app module huh. that's you why can skip <laughs> import yeah. you can skip import or, or just skip import should we make it a standalone component yeah yes um, people could vote on it, standalone, standalone or on standalone. Okay, do you guys want standalone component or not? If you want standalone, put one on the chat. If you want modules, put two. Um, what is a standalone component? Okay, standalone is a new feature on Angular 14. Uh, Previously, if you want to generate, if you want to have a component like, let's say, this leader bond component, you have to declare it in a module like this one, leaderboard module. Um, but now, with version fourteen, uh, the declaring it on leaderboard module is optional. You can put, you can make the component as a standalone. You just need to to put here standalone true and you don't need to import it in a, a module but the question that we should ask is why do we need it, the modules in the first place um, I see yeah I think that Angular uh, implements the module automatically so each component has its own module uh, when when it's a standalone component, uh, it just abstracts it away from us, and we don't need to be explicit when creating a comp uh, component that it has also a module. It's just more automation for us. We don't need to care about that, and also it makes it easier to understand Angular concepts and how how Angular works. If you don't need to mm -hmm. understand how modules work. Yeah. Does the chat want it standalone? Yeah, we have one vote for standalone, and okay. I don't see any anyone voting for modules. Um, I think we screwed something. Well, if you added a path leader, yeah, um, that's why it's inside. Uh, but that's fine. You, 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 yeah, you can either run it again or just remove the the folder. Mm -hmm. We are so much spoiled with schematics. Okay. So we have our login components. Let's import it to the leaderboard. And do you should we remove this? Remove what? The oh yeah. Yes. Let's We're not gonna use put it, it anymore. for example here. It's not gonna work because I need to import the the login in leaderboard module. So yeah, what's interesting about standalone components is that you're not importing modules anymore, yeah. but importing components, which is if you're uh, if you're used to importing modules, importing components is weird. It just feels wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that's how it works now. Yeah, because we used to do the components in declaration. It feels weird to see them in imports. Yeah, it it feels wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it more performatic though? Uh, I I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think that makes a difference in performance. It's just less boilerplate code. Okay, so 
we should probably check the documentation about Angular Fire uh, authentication. Okay, our login works. Angular Fire. Oh, and other interesting thing about Stellar Components uh, way that I uh, was talking uh, today, and he said you can import uh, directives directly into uh, your standalone component, so you can import ngif, uh, and you don't need to import the whole common module if you're just using ngif. If, I think that's what I understood about it, but I, I've never tried it. Yeah, he like uh, importing, for example, here only in GF instead of common module. Yeah, I I feel like this could could I wish this could have been done like um, automatically for us. If you import ng, uh, if you import common module, I wish Angular was clever enough to shake things out of the build or the uh, module bundle if they're not used. Uh, and that's, what's, that, that's what happens if you're just using NGF, you're not importing the whole module, right? Mm -hmm. The whole common module. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's not possible. Um, you can import a lot of stuff. But for some reason, if it's not working here, why it's giving me this? What's the? It's saying nothing about it. That's weird. I, don't you just need to save it? What's the, the error message? It must be reported via ng module. Ah, so um, we can't import it directly in a. That's weird. Why? Let's try you can import an ng module. working here too. Huh. The directive in GF appears in import but it's not standalone and cannot import directly. I think this is available on on uh, Angular sorry uh, version what's wrong with you? Uh, 14 yeah, one? 14 one not 14 zero uh, so does that mean if you just remove package lock and install again, you'll have 41? Uh, we should probably go through the Angular IO update. Well, it's uh, yeah, another thing. That works. <laughs> it's out of our scope. <laughs> okay. As much as I want to do it now and test. <laughs> We need to finish this first. Okay, let's see how the authentication works. Uh, getting started. I hope they didn't change the API and update oh, the documentation. <laughs> Just by looking at the last issue we had, um, the documentation is not uh, yeah. updated, I guess. Yeah. So we might have issues like looking at the current documentation for uh, setting up authentication. And that's just could be, um, it could be not updated. Mm -hmm. If the documentation is not updated, <laughs> where can we find the info? <laughs> Should we dig in? There? Uh, I, <laughs> no, I think they, they follow it in a um, Firebase API and yeah, not in Angular Fire, but uh, in Firebase. But yeah, let's try in Angular Fire okay. first. Um, I think we have everything installed. Um, 
Okay. So mm. we import Angular Fire Auth and um, use the login method or something. Mm, uh, this dot auth sign in with pop up. That's good. So no seems easy. Refreshes. But... Yeah. Good. Oh, login. Let's just import this here. Um, well, then they, yeah, then they I think provide it's updated the... because they updated the path. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> Constructor. Um, okay. Okay, uh, we should have a login button. This dot Angular Fire out login. Let's see. This dot art sign in with pop up sign in. Yeah, just just copy that code. <laughs> it gets <laughs> faster. Okay, sorry. Uh, let's add a button here. Log me in, please. And add our click and log in. Do you prefer uh, using prefixes on uh, methods like uh, using here on? I see um, this pattern a lot. Um, I don't have a strong opinion on this. I'm fine with either. With okay. If it does work like this, I'm gonna be surprised. It's not. So I like that they provide a observable uh, to. Um, it's a problem. Can you go back to the? Um, Angular um, fire documentation. Uh -huh. Where is the observable? Uh, so you have auth dot user async as user. Oh. Okay. So once you are signed in, they affect the info is here. Let's see if yeah. we have the avatar and stuff. Angular Fire Auth uh, user. We'll need, to, we'll need to take a look at the API. Uh, okay. User info ID token. Okay. Okay. Let's go back and see. Um, why this is a wait page? Oh, there's a, a current error. current user. Yeah, we need. There's to... a current user property. There is a current user. Okay. Yeah, there's a property current user. Uh, and then it has display name, email. Uh, photo URL. That's what we want, I think. Mm -hmm. Email. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's possibly normal. Uh, so we could um, we could add that information into our uh, login component, like. Um, like this, and she 
Oops, uh, ing container. Uh, to be uh, auth. What was the property name? Angular Fire Auth. Completion is not helping us. Um, so dot user async as user. So we probably have that information, current user information in, in that observable. Mm -hmm. It's the same. I think it's the same user. Just one observable and the other one is a promise. Okay. Um, so I think we need, we need to import something. Configuration with dependency injection, use current browser language. Uh, gen. Um. I didn't specify that we need to import. Oh. Okay, just updated the file. So we have common module in NGF. Um, uh, so Angular Fire should be public, so we can access it or either protected. Now we can use protected uh, protected properties on the template, which is good. Why do you think it's good? I think it's good because you don't expose these properties to um, consumers of your component, maybe. Um, uh, like, if we did here public, what's the difference between making here public and using the the user? Protected. Like um, protected is available if um, you have some class extending your component, but it's not available publicly. It just makes sense. You want to encapsulate your class and make uh, things not available publicly. Okay. Um, I think we have an injection error. Is it an Angular thing, though? It's a class. It's a class uh, protected. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we need to provide the uh, some Angular Fire mo module. I yeah, um, I did add this Angular Fire Auth module, but I th I don't think it's the correct one. Uh, uh, it's maybe Angular Fire Auth module. Yeah, Angular Fire Auth module. Yeah, that's what I did. Mm. Since this is used in a um, standalone component, maybe you need to import into your standalone component. I did import in standalone component, but so. they, they didn't specify anything here. Uh, that's weird. Uh, so do we need to provide the auth module here? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, the auth service. Let's try. Maybe we need to use this. Um, but I think this. Oh, it's a providers array, not provider. So, providers. Yeah, I thought Angular Fire Auth module would provide that. No, it's not. That's so weird.
Did it work? No. It's not loading for me. I don't know if it's loading for you. Um, the the server. Do you have the access yeah. to the server? Yeah, but it uh, it's slow at this moment. I tried the providers array um, for Angular Fire off. Um, it didn't work. If you can see. Uh, see on Twitch? Oh, I think we need to provide a option, uh, authentication option. That's what we are missing. Uh, auth settings. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, Let's provide that in our component. Provide what? Uh, the auth settings. Isn't that something for specific users? Uh, that's what it's complaining about. Uh, it needs some options to be provided. Maybe that's okay. the auth settings or some other settings it's missing. Uh, in this case, app.options. This is imported from the same place. No. No provider for injection token. Uh, and, and then AngularFire2.app.options. I think this this is for testing, no? I don't know. Uh, maybe this, oh, oh it's uh, just settings, yeah. Maybe this is incompatible with uh, standalone modules, standalone components. Well, I don't know. Because we're initializing the Firebase with uh, the app module. I don't know how a dependency injection will, if that that's going to work correctly with standalone being mixed with uh, modules. Okay, let's try it on the app module. Um, let's remove this from login. Okay, let's comment this and yeah we, we could put that in inside a service as well and and provide that in root uh, yeah put the angular fire out logic yeah okay let's try first if it's working on the angular fire out module let's go here and add a button Going to create a separate service or just use the provider like Angular Farm? Um, just when wanna te I want to test if it's working um, okay. in the app module and see if the problem with standalone or the module. Yeah, I think so. I think I think uh, maybe you need things that are compatible with standalone modules to import in standalone. Uh, with standalone components to import. Let's copy this here. It should not complain. 
yeah same problem uh let's add this although i don't know what what it does okay so we do a use a provide all uh, wonder if we're just following some Um, all the old, yeah, yeah all documentation. Probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is no problem with with the standalone component. Okay, okay, so let's remove all of this. And go back to standalone. It's weird. Discard. 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 Let's go here. And now when you have problem like, like this, what do we usually do? We Google it in well, things. <laughs> wait, did, did it work? No. Or just removed everything? It didn't. Oh, you removed? I removed the okay. things on, 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 uh, App module. Angular Fire 7 authentication. Please. Okay, let's see. Okay. I'm looking at the documentation to see if I find anything. Oh, I think you need Getting to enable started. something on the on the authentication service. Yeah. Uh, Angular material. Router, router to dashboard, what module there is the auth, reaching auth service, okay, we take place with the Angular service, auth, Stop email. So we're trying to do. I'm checking this tutorial. Okay. Does she provide a uh, GitHub so I can see?
Okay, so there is a new API. So yeah. we're using the old one. We're, we're using the old one. That I think that's why it doesn't work. Uh, under fire. Um, this is a bad time for, to do a live stream. <laughs> Because they changed the API. Yeah. So if we're using the comp the the old module, then we probably need to set something up. Okay. Uh, for um, the old module's work. I found this code. Uh, it's using the same uh, version as ours let me just I think she oh she, I think I she, got it I think I got it we need to provide the options for the uh, we need to provide the options for the old uh, version uh, if we go to okay the it's using 7 She's not even importing the auth module. Yeah. Hope it works now. Uh, did you make some changes? I did. Uh, Let's see what happens. Where are you? Uh, provide all. Wait. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, I had the same issue. Weird. Uh, it's the same. Let's see this um, code that I found from uh, this um, I think she's using the same version uh, as ours if you can see here on the app module she's just initializing the app like us and on the auth module she does not import the auth module and yeah on the I, service, I removed that I removed that already yeah on the service it's another syntax where is the service auth service I guess Yes. Um, it's injecting the art. That's weird. It's not the same path. Yeah, because the uh, new art is uh, it's not a, the compat compatibility uh, module. That makes sense. So let's just okay. import art from Angular Fire Auth. Yeah, we just needed to find the um, new documentation, but it looks like the documentation is the old one. Yeah, it's not updated. I'm wondering how people work with this. Do they just dig into the uh, the API here? Possibly, and, yeah. And read the code <laughs> and try to figure out how things works? Yeah. Uh, that's weird. Probably there is something to it, like they are following Firebase way of doing things, or I don't know. Yeah, they changed the whole API. They just forgot to update the documentation. <laughs> Probably there That's is fine. some other logic for that. Yeah. Okay, so import auth from this. Yeah, update updated that. And just to know what the new API, uh, what what you need to uh, actually perform the login. So I wasn't looking at the the, the website. 
you were looking at. Okay, so sign in with email and password. The funny thing is that their documentation was updated last month. Yeah, but they still, the example they use is still the old module. We pop up for example. What's wrong with you? Remove and use it. No. Um, Time. Sign in with pop up. Let's see. It has Firebase auth, which is this one. The second parameter is provide auth provider. What is this? Yeah, we're injecting where they are using the get auth function to to use it. Yeah, it's optional, I guess. No, you don't need not. to inject it. Auth, auth provider. What is provider? Oh. Why well, it's this one, like uh, Facebook Pro? Let's say it's Google provider. Okay. Provider. Hope I can. Auth provider. I cool. need you. Uh, what's the return type? It looks it's better than the old API. Yeah. Gotta say that. Oh, wait. Can, can you just use RxJS? Okay. And just run that to an observable? Because that's more angular. I don't know why they went with, um, with uh, promises. From this. And Great. let's do this or not. Should we subscribe? I guess. Okay, let's subscribe and see the results. Okay. Our beloved console log. And I, we need to change something here. Just put this. Then show from result. I hope things are working now. Oh, it's not giving a problem. Let's see. Configuration not found. That's a, that's a thing. That's a good thing. So we should probably, as saw in the, in her article that you need to, uh, we should give it, give her a credit for this. Um, we should configure something here in the authentication let's go and figure out figure out how console firebase yeah we should we should just copy that uh, url and paste on the chat so if anyone wants to look at it as well yeah um can i paste it i don't know why obs does not give me the the right to paste from here so i'm gonna pop paste it with my own account. Oh, it gets uh, filtered out. <laughs> okay. Authentication. We should probably get started. Google account. Can you set it in our chat? Uh, I did. Je Jennifer, you're, you're listening, right? Can you, can you make us moderators <laughs> um, enable automatically configured when you are connected she google sign android apps i don't know what is this let's have a quick look here I 
That's weird. Enable this. Oh. <laughs> I just need to leak the email. Okay, it's enabled. It should work now. Do you need to provide any any IDs or configuration not found? Let's take a the look at the environment file for that. Um, yeah, I just need it project. to load. It's working. It works. Yeah. It works. Nice. Yes. Uh, we console logged. Here is the user. Out display name email. Let's see. Nice. We wanted to see this. Oh, let's put it here. Okay, we can even uh, block people who are not um, Adobe emails at the front end as well. Yeah, don't know how are we going to do that. Yeah, ideally we also would have uh, something preventing at the back end. Okay, so um, th there is a quick solution is to not if we click on the button login uh, have a pop-up or something with uh, so he can enter the email the user can enter the email and then we can verify right away if the email is correct and then we can do an authentication with that email I but the, believe... the, the, there should be probably a, a configuration on Firebase to yeah set that's the up. other solution is to look on Google if there is a something like this on Firebase. Uh, how yeah. do you want to go with this? Should we look for it on Firebase? Uh, if we can here put some kind of configuration. Safe list clients IDs from external project optional. Um, Oh, templates. You can set the template. That's cool. Okay, uh, how about uh, we commit this and uh, deploy it? So if anyone wants to see that working, they, they can. Okay. We need to publish the. Um, um, we should remove URL. this, probably. We should remove this from the app module. Yes. Uh, and let's commit this, okay. Let's commit all of this. You see, uh, live share what, what it does on the commit interface. It uh, adds this co-author, your name and email. That's cool. Better properly give him credits. Yeah. Even though I'm not doing anything, but thank you for the credit. Uh, what should I do on the fit plugin? Add in, add Firebase. Oop, oop. Oh forgot about this again okay so the next thing is we need to find a good way to use that information okay let's see let's deploy I think we should 
think we should abstract that into a service and then have a subject that will get the user data, provide the user data. And then we yeah. just, when, when the user is logged in, we just um, update that subject, uh, behavior subject with um, the user information. Okay, let's do that. Good. Um, Oops. can I run a uh, ng generate you... service? Oops. Oh, the terminal is read only for me. Uh, let me just, I'm gonna paste the link, the link to the deployed version. Go ahead guys and uh, log in and spam the the Firebase authentication. I think you can see the authenticated user he, users here. You can see my email. If you go to the link and authenticate, maybe you can see others here. No one? Okay. Uh, I'll try it. Wait, is this, does this update automatically for you? Uh, here is the link. I just sent it on chat on the chat. It... No, sorry, uh, that gets filtered out. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Let me try to log okay. in. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, should they create a Bitly link. <laughs> okay, what? Uh, Bitly, quick Bitly link. To so uh, Mark is Mark is a moderator. Um, I'm gonna send the link to him. Thank you, Mark. There it is. Uh, yeah, send all the links to Mark. He's going to be the official link. Uh, okay. Link share person. I don't know. Um, so uh, do you have access to generate a service? Uh, okay, we have Mark, I, we have Fabio. I, I don't have, I, I can type it into the terminal. Ah, you can have, okay let me let me give you the access uh, read only you have only my query done right can you now mm -hmm. no, I don't think so Okay. Let me see if I have. Oh, I think I have access. Uh, but we can see uh, focus participant. No, I don't have access. You don't? Try to open a new one. Okay with uh, right access. Cannot edit a read-only terminal. Uh, okay, uh, can you see oh, okay. the other one? I think so. Oh, okay. we can see the... NG, generate service. That's cool. Let's put it in core folder. Where, where do you think that belongs? Login? Uh... Probably should be on login. Let's let's uh, put it on login and provide it on login. Okay. Uh, so we generate the login service, and then we're gonna get the um, the service. Uh, 
all the service logic into our service, login service. Oh my, uh, the autocomplete doesn't work for me for some reason. I'm just copying, copying stuff. Okay, I'm gonna create a web uh, user behavior subject. Okay, um, should we just use the instance given by the authentication? I think we need no need to use the the auth the behavior subject no. So what was your question? Um, can we can we use this dot auth user or something? Uh, I the... don't know if that's available. I don't think so. I don't think that it has that information. The current user as an observable? No. Does it have? User device, current user, it's a plain object. That's weird. It does not. Auth extends Firebase Auth. Uh, I don't see it. Yeah. Oh, I think it is. Uh, yeah, maybe. So that would be this dot auth dot current user that makes sense but that's a plain object okay it's user it's gonna, or no uh, okay it's gonna be but that change but that's not an observable yeah uh, dot Yeah, let's just use the paper subject, I guess. My, my question is, how are you going to update the behavior subject? Like, from where are you going to get the next value? So user, when we get user information, uh, okay. then, then we update. So it would be like this, dot um, value. So that is a user dot text uh, and please import uh, import the types for me and method. Okay. Oh, it's a uh, user credential or known. Oh, the this should be a behavior subject. Mm. I'll just not type it and let it in for, okay. Okay, now we have, let's put a dollar sign because I like that for observable. Yeah. Mark is asking, are you guys not going to use Angular Fire Auth? Um, I, they changed the API. It's not uh, Angular Fire Auth now. It's this auth. Um, I mean, I, I mean, if the um, do you mean the Angular Fire provider, if there is one, or do you mean the old API? Import Angular Fire Auth from yeah. That's the yeah. old API. That's the only guy. Let's, let's check if it's going to work or not. Uh, no, we already did. Wait. No. So now we can go back to our component and instead of 
importing the um, Firebase auth, we are going to um, import the login service. And our user observable will be this.login service dot user. Uh, and then our on login, we will uh, call this dot login service dot on login. I think that's it. Can you import for me? And then remove the okay. stuff we don't use anymore. Um, where did okay. you declare the service? Is it on the components or it's a uh, root? Okay. Oh, we, uh, we don't it? need it because it's provided in root, um, and then it's going to be available in our bundle. Should we make it more encapsulated and provide it on the components only? I don't think we need that because uh, the bundle is going to be the same. It's going to be the same result because this is not lazy loaded. Mm -hmm. I don't think that makes a difference. And I think Angular is, is pretty smart to know when to three shake uh, services out if they are provided in room. Angular is able to know which components are injecting it. It uh, should work so. the same. Yeah, still working. Yep. Uh, should work the same. Can I log with this other account? Um, Let's see if it's going to update the behavior subject. Oh, we need to subscribe to it. I'm going to subscribe to it in the component and show the uh, sorry, user observable now. Okay. Um, user. Uh, user dot display name. Okay, I don't like that. This is called user dot user, but yeah. Um, Mark says always provide in root. Uh, why do you think that uh, you should always provide it in root? Is that the same response I gave, or is there some other reason we should always provide in root? Yeah, I also think yeah. think it's that way. Unless you really want, uh, want. Um, one instance of that service for each, um, for different components or modules, then you would have to provide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in, in terms of, of encapsulate, not encapsulating, but um, if I want, for example, later in the future to just copy paste this login button and put it in some other place. I'm gonna copy all the folder with the services and I will know that all these services are working fine because they are injected here and not on some other place. Like well, if I'm working you're... with libraries in NX or something. I don't know, I'm just rambling. I'm trying to yeah. arrange the but idea. I think that copying and pasting stuff and Expecting that work is <laughs> not a, not ideal. Uh, uh, you should probably not duplicate services like that, or even components. Uh, try to make the component as generic as possible, then we use it. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Um, by the way, it's uh, working. I just logged in, and it showed me the my name. That's awesome. So we have awesome. user Same data. Way. We can we can start working on the component that's going to show the um, user image, uh, user name, and on Firebase we, we would fetch data that the user would be able to change, like a description or a custom image. I don't don't think we're going to try to. Um, use the custom image today, but I think it's possible to create a description property in Firebase and then let the user update that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to do so, the Firebase has this Firebase authentication, so we need, but if you see here, um, we don't have more infos uh, we only have these infos about the user you can just reset his password and stuff if you want more information like description we need to create a firestore database uh, with an ID of the connected user I don't know if this makes sense like starting a collection call it yeah. players and yeah, then I think that's the way to go. Document ID. I need the ID, for example, of this. Uh, let's bring an ID. For example, this one. Copy it. Wait here. Uh, and then add description. Okay, I just added a logic, so the login button only appears if you're not uh, if you're not logged in. So if there's user information, we don't need to show the login button. Okay, so in GF else. Okay. Um, what's your opinion about template variable acronyms? I don't know why I ask about this, but uh, I do like standard way of doing things. Like I see this Which... a lot. They do, for example, login TPL as a so template. How, how would you do it differently? Would you have a second NGF for, oh, do you mean just changing the? Uh, changing the, the variable name and always oh, okay. starting with what's going to be shown first like in this example it's gonna be reversed but how would you pass user information down to the to user data to to the uh, display name if you're doing it backwards um I don't know. You can, for example, what in if here, put the opposite of this, and then show this. Else, um, yeah. It's so I, I th yeah, think it's gonna be more complicated. Yeah, I think one other way you can do is there's the interx let interactive in which you're just defining and subscribing to uh, the observable and then you can do a ng two different ngifs ngif user and ngif not user but that's only one uh, only one subscription mm -hmm. that would be and I, I love the interact slot directive uh, but it's usually not available in projects. So uh, what you could do is have a ng container. Are you looking at my code? Yeah. That you have a ng code. This is hacky, a little bit hacky, but it works. And you have an object that will uh, have user and then user dollar sign. 
async by. And then that is always true P, right? Mm -hmm. But the property is not. So you can have uh, a, another a, ng container, second ng if. Oh. And inside that, ng if user. Uh, as, oh, sorry, as data, and then data dot user. And then here goes our logic. And then we could have, then we could have our button in, in a more simple way with just the NGF. NGF data dot user, not data dot user. Um, so if data dot user is falsy, why, we... why not just use user async as user? Uh, because then it's going to be user dot user dot user. <laughs> no, like uh, here. Yeah. Use user. Um, async. Oh, it's because if, if, yeah, so it's because if that is falsy, if this is falsy, this will never be able to, uh, to render. That's why you're using, we're wrapping it in an object. Right? Yeah, but is null false, falsy? Like, uh, what? Yes, no, it's false. Okay, let's. And the result of user is uh, possibly no, so um, this would never be able to uh, be um, rendered mm -hmm. because since this ng if is falsy, the whole block is not rendered. So you never get to uh, this condition. Yeah, so that's interesting. then we yeah. wrap it in an object and make that. Make that work, uh, and then you can try it and see it working. Mm -hmm. Because object is not falsy. Empty object. Yes. Yeah. It's always true. The I, I I bet the interx lab directive does something similar. Um, I think I need to do something like this. User. Yeah. Objects and then data. No, it's faulty. What is false here? Uh, em empty object. No, but it's not an empty object. It's an object that has user property. And now you can just run not not data one. It's still false. And see what the not not data one should be true. Yeah, but why it's not working like this? That's weird. It's not 
equal to true if you write if data one and then console.log something, then you're gonna see it working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I was looking for a quick way to check for a true T or four C, but I believe you should always use the if and else. This will not. Yeah, work. or just convert it to Boolean, I guess. If you wrap it with Boolean class, then I think it. Would we should re return true? Really, like this? Oh. Yeah, fully an empty object is true. Uh, Boolean class. Yeah. You will misspell boolean. Boolean, no. Uh, we are going to make rules to restrict what users are allowed to write to. Uh, so we will have, at, at some point, we will have some users with a specific role that, and those users will be able to uh, add information and edit information. Okay, uh, are you all gonna make... But a user should only be able to change information on their own um, user data, like the description and username if they want to display. Okay, so what's the next step now? Um, should we create a Firestore? Yeah, I think we should create um, and add the logic for updating. Yeah, a collection for in, in Firestore. Okay, so we have a players collection. What? We have a players collection, and okay. we have this player with a description. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, we need to. We already have the player's um, collection, so we just need to add documents with some properties. And the there should be an ID that we should be able to use from Google Authentication. And mm -hmm. we would have to add a uh, condition in the in Firebase that when users are trying to update a document. And players collection, then we would check if the user ID is the same that the collection ID. But why users will update? Uh, uh, they want to update the description or the display name. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. First thing we need to do is find out which properties there are in the user. Uh, we need to console value there uh, to see what data we have available. Okay. Well, let's or just take a look at the user credential um, type so we can see. Um, user provided provider ID and operation type. So user has uh, 
tenant ID? No, I don't think that's. User metadata, maybe. Oh, we could use the email. We have the the ID, the email, the display name. We have the email. Yeah. I think we can use the email. And we'll be using the email and the UID to Both? create the document, yeah. Because the we need to reference the document uh, like this. Could be something like like this players with ID UID then you you add the yeah, so Infos, both are like strings, right? So I, I don't have a preference yeah. over UID or uh, email. Uh, okay, Mark is voting for UID, I think. Okay, let's use UID. Okay, so when should we add this logic? Uh, should we add it? Should we add an update uh, method or uh, add the logic here inside of login? Sorry, what? What's the next step now? Okay. Um, so the next step is. Uh, we need a service that will, will be the service that the user will update information. Okay, so we should add a and, new service. Yeah, and, and, and then that service will use the Firebase uh, API to update the collection. Mm -hmm. But we will update the collection based on the user ID uh, provided by the Google Auth provider, provider. and yeah. it, it's based on, uh, so we have, when the user tries to update something, we will have the user observable that has that information, um, and I think we, we just need to have a, serv a method in a service, and that method expects user ID and the updated information that users try to update. Mm -hmm. So yeah, probably a service with a couple me methods. Okay, uh, let's create the service. So what should we call it? Like user service? Uh, let's something call like that. user service. Okay. Um, should be on core, no, not core. Um, uh, we could create a new user component inside login because login is now like doing two separate things, right? Yeah. Um, either uh, this logic. Um, this if else logic goes to uh, a different component, parent component, and that parent component will uh, use the login component or the user component. Does it make sense? So the login component would, would not render the user component. The user co component would be rendered by the app component. And the app component will decide if he wants to, it wants to render the login or user component. 
So the user observable would be inside the app component instead. So we should create we don't need a to, new to... component, user, and inside of it, a user service? Like the same yeah, way, I like think so. Login. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. But it doesn't need to be inside login. We could do it inside login uh, to make it more simple at the moment, and we can no, uh, go a, on. I, I just yeah. don't think it's the, you know, the ideal way of doing it. But if we want to just move forward and implement more stuff today, then I think that's fine. Uh, is the param like this? No. No, that's why I do like working with Linux. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's like this. Read service. And this should be on the, the leaderboard. Should be here. Uh, you mean the user imported by the leaderboard component or mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. not stand alone. That's weird. Why is what? Uh it didn't make it stand alone. So Should we take a look at the design and see? Because I'm, I'm lost on how the things will be implemented. Sorry, should be what? Uh, take a look at the design. Okay, so uh, we have this, and then when you click, should show the banner or pop up or whatever and then if you are logged in you should have an update profile uh, I don't know how this would work with my with our current situation okay uh, I think we could just create a form and try to integrate it with uh, Firebase and just allow user to update even though we don't have a pretty UI yet. Ah, okay. But, but the service will would be working, the 
everything would be working. And then uh, in the future, we can build the, a better UI for it. Okay. Uh, makes sense. Uh, so we need two text. inputs, um, one for display name and one for description. You're going to use reactive forms or just regular forms? Let's uh, put a vote on the chat. Do you guys want to see reactive forms or template-driven forms? Description and? Reactive. Reactive. <laughs> OK. Uh, what's the other property? Um, uh, display name or username, whatever we yeah. want to call it. Display name. Okay. Please. Okay, so you guys want reactive forms? Okay. Yeah, yes. Form group, uh, we'll create a form group of type. Oh, and we mm -hmm. should use the non nullable, by the way, which is an awesome new API thingy of reactive forms. Um, yeah. It will inject when you inject form group, you get a property. Uh, before you use the group function, you would uh, you would use form builder dot non nullable dot group, I think. Uh, display name and description. Description, it's a string. Form group of type. Ah, we can do this. Ah, needs to be a form control, okay. Um, Let's do this form control of string and uh, should we should I just initialize it with the new form group with no um. I don't know if we need to type it. Uh, it. I think it can be inferred for brevity. Uh, and update profile should probably start with um, an uppercase letter. Um, where is update profile? Uh, uh, okay. The type you created. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, display name. It feels good writing Angular again. Uh, this should be an abstract control. Uh, new form control of null. What does the no 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 uh, What's wrong with this? Uh, so at this point, 
um, since your type does not uh, expect no values, I think that that's where you have yeah. your um, okay, big problem. Okay, so that's why we need the. So we won't have no values actually. We will either have empty strings or uh, we could have empty strings <laughs> or uh, string values, so it would never be null. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a, a property that you can pass onto form group, which is um, mark share the non nullable true property. Is it as an option? Uh, the second argument, yes. Um, which one? No notable. Oh, Mark saying this is on each form control. Oh, okay. but, uh, I, I do prefer the uh, using the form builder for form this builder. because the form builder makes it uh, makes it easier. Um, with you can do the same with a lot of less code. Uh, uh, it's a, it an, object an object. With, yeah. What does non-nullable do? Uh, non-nullable will tell um, form builder, form group, and form control and form group uh, will help it infer the types. So you should never, um, if you try to use the null value as the first value of the form control, the starting value, I don't think it will allow. Uh, okay, so f for example, if you do a reset to the form, it's not gonna be nullable, it's gonna be an empty empty string? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so... And not only that, it also the type is working that if you try to assign a null value to it, it won't allow you. It won't allow you. Uh, sorry, if I try to? What? Uh, you said if I try to. Um, <laughs> if you try that? to assign null, null values to um, the form controls, it will not allow you. Because you have type safety. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, your controls are not any uh, of type any anymore. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, for group, should we use a form control name? I wish if this has some kind of auto completion, some plugin or something. From control name? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can use form uh, control without name. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you can. Yeah, I, I would avoid using click on that button because uh, if you want to use the submit. Yeah, I think the submit is for more acceptable. The, okay. For the uh, keyboard update, for example, and I think accessibility too. Yeah. Yeah, we have our form. 
Nice. That's great. Um, so now we we're need to four... implement the service. Yeah, we're four minutes away from wrapping this up. I think we can uh, we can wrap it up maybe in in text stream. We could start by building the service for this and connecting it to Firebase, so users are able to update their that their information. And also, you would need to fetch uh, user information, so it's it gets um, it updates the form automatically when you log in. Mm -hmm. Okay. With current information, yeah, does that sound good? Okay. Can I just put a style here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're gonna use the last last three minutes. Yeah. Um display block. No. It's extraction color. And center. Flex box is a blessing. Yeah. And the curse. In the same time. <laughs> it's better than using tables. Yeah. Uh, for the radius of five pixels, um, add in top five. I would say maybe using divs and then display table on each div. You, you could achieve the same results. Oops. Uh, this is not working. Why? Uh, you don't need the host selector because form is going to be um, only selecting the, you know, it has the shadow down or something like that. that I creates... know, but I, I like working with toast. I think it, it has only one. Yeah, that's right. Oh my God, this is messing up with the other stuff. <laughs> Uh, trying to make it much worse <laughs> looking. <laughs> uh, that's, that's an interesting form from Mark. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think I should do it here, flex basis.
the Windows library, doesn't it have any farm that we can use? What? The Windows 95 library. Does yeah, we, we did something that uh, it's not, it wasn't working, so we just went on without it. Uh, we probably need to fix this for the next stream. looking better. Set box channel like that. Hmm? I didn't know you could set box channel like that. Yeah, I always use the diff tool because it's... <laughs> Interesting. Um, should we change the focus? No, okay. Let's not push it. Uh, we have a button. Yeah. Windows 95 UI will look good right there. does not look better. <laughs> okay. Looks production ready for me. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Um X Ah. Why it does take all the width okay, let's put width. What are you trying to do now? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's enough. Uh, okay, uh, it does look good. Um, so for the next stream, we're going to um, write the service for updating the user information display name and description. 
and also fetch the data from Firebase to pre-populate that data into the form. And yeah, and maybe create a better UI for this. <laughs> Fix the Windows 95 for sure. um, issue we have. OK. Yeah, that's and good. We need to document ourselves a little bit more about the Firebase new EPA, API. Um, so we'll do a lot of stuff in one session, hopefully. OK. OK, so see you guys on the next stream. Have a good day. Thursday? Next Thursday, right? Uh, I don't know, Tuesday or Tuesday. Okay. Well, who will thank you all for your presence. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Have a good thank day. Thank you. Have a good day.